Hi, everyone. Good evening. It's Catherine. <clears throat> I'm um, your health and wellness coach, uh, neuroscience, applied neurosciences practitioner and um, neurolinguistic programming practitioner. I am here to talk to you about the power of negative emotions on the development of physical illnesses. I haven't been on a live forever. I think it's been like three weeks. And there's a good reason for that because I was sick. I had a viral pneumonia and that threw me off <laughs> quite a bit. Um, and I've just uh, recently recuperated my voice, <clears throat> which I'm having a little vestige here. <laughs> hey, Stefan, you're driving. You're not supposed to look at <laughs> your phone. <laughs> um, so, yeah. The power of negative emotions. Um, so here's the thing. All right. So I was sick with viral pneumonia. And in hindsight, uh, yeah, you know, I went networking. I met with some people who might have been sick and transmitted that, you know, the bugs or the pathogens, the bacteria, the viruses to me. And it was in a, in a period of my life when I was feeling a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress and a lot of resentment in one aspect of my life. So resentment is a mix between anger, like more like frustration and sadness, which are two very positive, uh, very powerful negative emotions. Um, negative emotions such as anger, sadness, guilt, shame, uh, fear, anxiety, these are very low vibration emotions that have a direct impact on your body. And I'm not saying that all the illnesses are caused only by positive emotion, uh, by, you know, I am having some <laughs> lapses tonight, not positive emotion, negative emotion. I'm not saying that all illnesses are caused by negative emotions. Um, what I'm saying though, is that they will weaken your defense system like your immune system they will weaken your terrain whereas your body uh, will be more prone to developing an illness or to keeping an illness um, longer than it should be right so if you know I coach a lot of people with Lyme disease now I'm going to go um, start helping people with cancer also um, just helping people to accelerate their healing so that they don't need to stay stuck in those illnesses for so long, right? Um, so we know from the sciences of epigenetics and psychoneuroimmunology that how you think, the emotions that you think, have a direct impact on every cell in your body. So if you take, for example, psychoneuroimmunology is how you think and feel will have an influence on the immune system via the neurological system and uh, influence also the endocrine system, right? So um, if you have a tendency to think more negatively or to rehearse a certain problems or to feel a lot of stress, well, it's going to definitely have an impact on the immune system who's going to throw out a fit and uh, create a lot more inflammation um, because that's how it responds. The endocrine system will um, be impacted by getting tired, right? So the adrenals will get tired, the thyroid and the reproductive organs might get tired and not function properly, right? So we know that, that I mean, that's a science, that's, that's fact, it's proven that your cells respond to that. Now, with the science of epigenetics, what we know is that your gene expression, so let's say you have a cell in the body and it's supposed to be um, a thyroid cell, right? So it's got the DNA to develop into a thyroid cell. The way that your cells react to the outside environment, so if there's stressors, uh, traumas, stressors can be from your diet, from lack of sleep, from... Uh, absorbing chemicals and toxins in your environment from feeling so stressed out that it brings a lot of, to you know, that, that it, it creates toxic thoughts. This will influence the way that your genes are expressing themselves and the way that your cells are being um, produced or not, right? So epigenetics is a science that 
controls uh, gene expression. So let's say you have a good gene that is protective for you, but because you feel a lot of stress, it won't express the gene that would have been protective to you. Or if you experience a lot of stress and you have some genes for illnesses, we all have some genes that are, you know, bearing illnesses, uh, it might turn that gene on and start to express and transcribe and, and make up dysfunctional cells that will bring illness in your body. So we know that, right? So the power of negative emotions, where do these negative emotions come from? So I know I've talked about it quite a bit, but it's how, how you think about, let's say there's an event in your life and how you think about it, the meaning that you give to that event will determine how it feels in your body. Because it will determine when you think about an event cognitively, it'll, you bring that perspective that you're maybe used to bringing and it's going to bring the feeling from that meaning, right? So let's say you've had a, an unpleasant conversation with a colleague or someone in your family, and then it triggers a thought, oh, well, maybe I'm not capable, or I'm not lovable, and this person is being um, a jerk, or, <laughs> you know, it brings out negative emotions. It can be sensations in the body of like, oh, having a knot in the chest or in the throat or in the gut, and um, and it just feels uncomfortable, right? And so how it feels, so how it means will determine how it feels and how it feels will determine your course of action. So if you felt unlovable, you might take an action of, I don't know, going to the fridge and eating all the ice cream that's there or going to the cupboard and eating all the cookies that are there, right? So... Um, and then your course of action will come back into the feedback loop of how uh, how you cognitively appraise some, a situation, right? So if you eat all the cookies and all of a sudden you feel not well or you feel like you have a bellyache or it, 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 it interferes with your mood, well, there's a good chance that you're going to keep feeling bad and reproducing the same kind of cascade of negative emotions, right? So one thing that I teach in my, in my conferences, in my talks, is how to recycle negative emotions. So how to stop that cycle of that cascade of how it means, determines how it feels, and then how it feels determines the action, and then the action will determine again how it feels, and then it just keeps going. You have to cut the cycle somewhere and recycle those negative emotions. Because not only you're going to, um, not only recycling your emotions is going to make you feel better and more joy and lightness and elation and gratitude, but it'll also protect your physical body from the damage of negative emotions. So, this is something that I teach uh, in my conferences, and um, uh, I have a conference coming up in French in Bromont uh, next Tuesday, uh, March 12th. So um, if you speak French and you would love to assist, I would love to be with you. <laughs> um, I'll put the link in the comments for, for uh, the conference. But this is also something that I do... Um, uh, in the coaching that I, you know, with my clients. So basically, when I became a nurse in 2004, I quickly uh, realized the biggest mistake of medicine was to separate the body and the mind. Because they don't go one without the other. A body that is not well will make a mind feel not well and vice versa. A mind that's not well will definitely impact the body. And we know that from the sciences of psychoneuroimmunology and epigenetics. We know that, right? So um, <clears throat> in order to thrive and have a good life, what you need is to be able to put the right conditions in the body so you feel energy and vitality and, and ease and well-being, right? No pain in, in your body. So set the right conditions in, in your body to feel energy. Set the right conditions in your mind to feel courageous and to feel aligned emotionally with what you want to create and so that you, you're able to manage your emotions as they come up also. So set the conditions in your body 
to have energy and vitality, set the conditions in your mind to feel courageous, positive, motivated, passionate. And when you do that, that's when your soul can emerge and flourish into your life's purpose, right? When, when the body is feeling tired <clears throat> and um, there's no vitality and when your mind is feeling stressed out and anxious and on survival, there's no way that your soul can expand into your life purpose because you're in survival mode. You're not thriving, right? So if this speaks to you, reach out to me. I have um, two spots right now in one-on-one -on -one coaching and I would love, love, love to hear about you and, um, and see how I can help um, recycle these emotions and, and coach you to learn how to manage your emotions. Because one of the things that I see all the time with people is when you're not able to manage your own emotions, first it creates a lot of disharmony in your relationships, which creates even more stress, right? The, the, the most common stressor or the biggest stressor in one's life comes from um, relationships and, you know, interrelations, um, interactions with people. So when you don't manage your emotions well, anything small can become big like that. It's like fire, right? Emotion is energy in motion and it can get inflamed. It can get fired up. Um, so when you can't manage your emotions, relationships get dysfunctional, they get stressful. There's no way that you can have a successful, I mean, that you, that you can live into your life's purpose you probably won't feel accomplished in your career or in your workplace because you feel stressed out all the time. Uh, when you can't manage your emotions, it's very difficult to connect with something that's greater than you or to connect with your inner being or to hear your own intuition because you're in that survival mode. You have not created that wide space, that space to just be with your highest self and, and hear your, your voice and, and intuition. Um, so... And on top of feeling psychologically not well, when you haven't learned to manage your own emotions, well, it damages the body. It, it can increase the uh, propension of um, or the susceptibility of developing physical illnesses, which we don't want that. We want to, I want you guys to thrive. I want you guys to feel so energized in your body, in your mind, courageous and motivated in your mind so that you can bring your unique gift into the world and fulfill your life's purpose. I see a lot of frustrated souls walking out there, very frustrated because they cannot live, express themselves and live their, their fulfill their purpose because either the, the body is sick and the person is always stuck at medical appointments and all that, or the mind is not well. And so the mind is frustrated and, and unable to manage emotions. And then the soul is kind of waiting and it's like, well, when, when will I be able to express myself and live my purpose? And let me tell you that when you're not living your purpose, it hurts emotionally because you know that you're meant for something greater than this life. And you know that you're probably wondering like, isn't there something else to this life? Like, come on. Um, so if this, uh, this speaks to you, reach out to me and um, I'd, be, I'd be so honored to help you uh, set the conditions in your body and in your mind so that your soul can fulfill its life's purpose. This is one of my mission um, in my own life's purpose. So connect with me. In the meantime, uh, if you're watching this video now in replay, I would love to know what is one emotion or many emotions that you would like to recycle, an emotion that you would like to no longer experience, to no longer feel, and what would you like to replace it with? So for me, I identified that I was living a lot of anxiety and resentment, and that had brought, that did bring on pneumonia, which was, uh, which sucked. <laughs> Honestly, it did. Um, so I recycled resentment into lightness and into a sense of ease and letting go, allowing, that's it, allowing and trusting uh, in, in my higher self, trusting that things unfold um, perfectly in time when they're due. So 
Awesome. I hope this serves you guys. I'm sending you lots of love and um, please recycle those negative emotions so that you don't have to, you don't have to stay stuck with those emotions, you know, night and day for days and months and weeks, you know, it, it doesn't serve you. So there's easier ways to, to go about on this path. All right. See you guys. I love you. Bye.